What is going on guys? This is Chris here with 608 Gaming and today I am back with another episode of Minecraft Creations and today I am going to be showing you guys um, my Minecraft version of the first Call of Duty Nazi Zombies map Nocter on Toten. Um, sorry, I bo completely butchered that, but what this is going to be is basically it's going to be kind of like an adventure-like map, basically, where you'll actually play and it's actually fully functional. So, the first thing you're going to do is, I don't have a spot for, apparently I don't have a spot set up for, uh, mine cards. I must have accidentally deleted that. Basically, you're going to stick a mine card on it, hit the button, it's going to take you all the way down here. And then this is going to be a wall of the rules. I didn't do it because once I actually can figure out how to get this map up for download to where you can actually use it on the Xbox One, there's going to be a full list of rules basically to show you how to play the game and make it, you know, actually be correct. Um, I'm just going to explain it to you guys within this video. So, And then here, if you play with four people, basically you're all going to sleep here because if you die, you're going to respawn basically and then you're going to drop back down. So um, you're all going to sleep here before you start. And then each person has their own select set of stuff. Basically, you're going to start with a wooden sword, um, iron, um, basically iron um, armor and stuff just to make sure that, you know, you're protected. And then basically currency in this is actually going to be rotten flesh because zombies are going to drop the most rotten flesh. So that's going to be your currency. So you're going to start with five um, rotten flesh. And then basically you're all going to start with a potion of healing basically so that, you know, if something happens, basically you have your, a way to, you know, heal yourself as you're um, basically, you know, getting attacked. And once you guys are all set up there and you've taken your little nappy poos so that you guys can, you know, respawn up here, then at that point you're going to um, enter right here. And we're just going to drop all the way down. I made it, you know, a, quite a ways up, so... And think about it, guys. When you're playing this, you're actually going to be already fully ready to go. But then you get in here, and here's the actual, the first floor. And basically now with this, this is where you're going to actually have your zombies spawn. So, for instance, you know, rounds one through five, you're going to press here. And it says up here, basically, push once for each number of round you're on. So for round one, you're going to press it once. Round two, you'll press it twice. All the way up to round five, you're going to press this five times. And then it's going to be the same for over here. Um, round six through ten, you're going to press six once. You're going to press um, ten, or and then basically seven once, or seven twice. I'm sorry, eight three times, and so on. Ten, you're going to push five times, and then here you're going to press. You know, after round ten, basically you're going to do um, basically one through five, and then once you hit five, you're just going to press this five times every time. And if you happen to make it that long, let me tell you guys. You're absolutely amazing because you will be playing this on hard difficulty basically to make it as hard as possible. And then each one of these things is going to be the uh, um, each type of weapon. So basically each weapon has its own price and your price is going to be your rotten flesh. Now what these chests are is basically the, these are the trap chests. So when you open that chest, um, basically whatever you're getting is going to spawn out. So basically if you're going to play it correctly... Once you open that chest, you're going to put whatever that price is, you're going to put it into the chest to make it accurate. Um, I've tried basically going through. There's different ways you can do it where you can just toss specific amounts of whatever in through, and it goes through droppers and hoppers and all that jazz. But basically to make this look as accurate as possible, I didn't have the room to stick those specific mechanisms in. So this is going to be the best that it's going to be. But overall, as long as you use it correctly, it's a pretty effective system. So right there you got a stone axe, which is four. Um... La -da, da 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 basically to open up doors, you're basically just going to stick it in one of these chests. This isn't a trap chest, it's just a regular one, but basically you're going to stick your 10 in, and then you can open up to get to the next, that's the help room. Same thing up here, you know, to clear the debris, same thing, you put 10 in, then basically you open it, it clears it so you can go down, things like that. Um, so we're just going to kind of take a little bit of a tour here so you guys can kind of see what's up. So like I said, this is the first um, floor, and then at that point, this is the, what the help room is, which is pretty sweet. Um... I tried to make this as accurate as absolutely possible, and I think it turned out pretty good because it was kind of hard to find specific screenshots and stuff, so I ended up actually going back, um, going old school, and I was playing, um, actually playing this to kind of get an idea of what the uh, map actually fully looks like. So then right there um, is an iron sword, and I'm basically just going to show you guys with the iron sword basically what it does. So, you, so let's say I had eight, um, we'll say that I had eight... Uh, uh, rotten flesh basically you open it you get it but once you get that then you got to put your eight rotten flesh back into the chest okay so that just makes it you know so that it's going to be accurate because otherwise you guys could just pretty much just open a chest up a hundred times and get whatever you want and that's honestly just no fun if you want to play it and make it be like how it was back you know playing nazi zombies back in the day now here's the mystery box. The mystery box was a little bit different because by going with this whole technique, I couldn't just stick two together because basically it's going to give you two things every time and you can't fit as many things. And people usually use the mystery box the most. So that's why I ended up just doing five different chests. Each one is the same thing. Basically it's going to cost you nine 
per chest, whichever one you decide to open, everything within them is random. And then basically, um, like it says here, um, it's nine per each mystery box, only one box per transaction. So let's say, for instance, okay, I'm going to hit up the mystery box. I'm going to go here. Basically, you're going to stick your nine in that box, and it's going to give you a random selection from the dispenser underneath. And then let's see here. Now we'll go upstairs. That So I paid the ten. Technically, I cleared that. There we got another iron sword. La -da 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 -da. This is the upstairs area. It's basically the same thing. Um, and one thing I guess I didn't show you guys was the doors. The doors are going to be like the windows. When the zombie breaks through a door, it's going to, um, basically it's going to spawn down, or basically, I'm sorry, they're going to, it's going to drop so you can pick it up, and then basically you can put the doors back up as if you're repairing the windows just like how it was playing Nazi Zombies. Now here, this is basically the only one that's not an actual melee weapon. This is the bow and arrow. Basically, you're going to open up this door just like, it was like a cabinet that was in Nazi Zombies. Basically, you're going to open up this chest in the center. That's where you're gonna take. That's where you're gonna put your money. You're gonna get the bow from the bottom, and then basically the arrows up top. You can just take as many as needed. Um, that's the only way to end up doing it like that. And overall, I think it's a pretty effective system. And then we'll go over here. And then the only other cool thing. I mean, this is another you know golden sword. So basically another melee weapon. This is the other cool one. Basically these are heal splash healing potions. And with these, these are gonna act like grenades. Um, if you throw one of them, it's not going to kill all the zombies around, but it's going to definitely hurt them a lot. Now, with these, though, I had no way to set it up so you have an, uh, an unlimited amount because you can only have basically one per box. So basically over here, um, there's only nine. Now, if I end up putting this up for download, I may set up another section over here so you have a few more to use. Um, but that's basically going to be your grenades. And overall, yeah, guys, I mean, this is pretty much the basic tour. Um, Nocturne Toten was pretty simple, but this wasn't exactly uh, exactly simple to make because I wanted it to be interactive as well. So my plan is, if you guys want me to, I'm actually going to get a couple guys together, and we're actually going to do a Let's Play of this if you want us to. I think it would actually be a lot of fun. Um, definitely comment, down that, uh, comment that down below and let me know for sure. And then let me take a look here, and I'm basically going to show you guys the outside area. So this is basically the outside area of the front section. Basically, the zombies are going to pop up in random sections here when you push those buttons. And, oh, it looks like I didn't fill that section in, so I'll get that section filled in. But basically, this is where the zombies are going to spawn. They're going to spawn out here, and they're going to spawn out here. Oh, another couple sections I didn't finish, so ignore that one, guys. I didn't notice that I didn't finish uh, up some of the stuff. Basically, they're all going to spawn out here in different sections. And then basically, you know, over here as well. But pretty much, I mean, I've got every door or every window basically set up how it was in the game. This looks a little bit different because I think this is supposed to be covered with um, basically the hilltop. But it just looked, it looked like it was going to be too much, so I ended up just putting it like this. But basically, this is the cave inside. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I've got that cave in there as well. Um, I couldn't replace it with blocks how you do in Nazi Zombies. But I've got it replaced with basically just wood, just like the... Um, the wooden, you know, the wooden planks and stuff. But yeah, guys, I mean, here's basically, if you can see, this is how the zombies come in. They walk up the stairs, they break through, and then they come down. And for you, it's basically like a window. So you're just going to shut that window. You know, if you've played Nazi Zombies, um, you're definitely going to understand and just play, basically play it with the limitations that Nazi Zombies kind of gave you, you know. I mean, that's the way to make it as accurate as possible. So now I'm just going to kind of show you guys a bit of an overview of the top. You know, I mean, if you guys look at any pictures online, I mean, this pretty well is... Nazi zombies. I didn't go into a whole lot of detail out here. I mean, there's a hilltop over here and stuff like that, but um, initially, if you guys can see these gaps here, that's because I had the zombies spawning far away, and basically, if you have them spawn too far away, they just kind of despawn because they're too far away from a character, so I had to redo everything and make them spawn um, closer, but basically, I don't have them spawning anywhere inside. They all spawn outside, and the whole point is for them to break through, so it's a pretty effective thing. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I'm going to show you guys quick basically what it's going to look like. Let's say we go down and we push, we'll say we push round 10, we'll say we push it three times, okay? Now, we're going to go up and I'm basically going to show you guys what it looks like when the zombies spawn. Now, the way that they come out is basically like this, and basically, yeah, I mean, you guys can see over here they're going to kind of look a little bit weird, but it's because I'm in creative mode and they're not going to touch me, but once you're in survival mode and you're actually playing this, they, they can smell you and they come right after you. But yeah, so you guys can kind of see, you know, how the zombies are spawning, things like that. And overall, I mean, once you guys push that five times, you're going to have a lot of zombies. That's why it's the end route. But also, like I said, it is going to be played on hard mode. You know, if you want to make it be realistic, play it on hard. If you want to play it on easy, that's fine too. But hard is going to be where it's actually going to be effective. But yeah, we'll just make sure the zombies spawn in there. And yep, well, we got a few in there. So other than that, guys, yeah. 
Um, that is Nocturne Untotent in Minecraft. So, um, like I said before, guys, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this video. If you think us doing a, um, a Let's Play in this um, on this map would be fun, let me know, and I'll definitely get that uploaded. Other than that, guys, I just want to thank you guys for watching this video. Have a good one. Hey, guys. If you like this video, then click on some of our other videos over here. If you want to follow us on Facebook or Twitter, the link will be down in the description. And if you want to subscribe to our channel, the link's going to be up here. In this general region is my assumption. Other than that, guys, have a good day.